you found me again here at Home Brewer TV. We got some fun things to do today. We're going to do a do-it-yourself project that I think everyone will enjoy. Plus, we've got some fabulous beers that you guys told me to find, and I did. We're going to taste those today in the tasting room. I want to shout out to some of our sponsors, homebrewtalk.com. Fantastic forum, lots of great people. Oh, the information is just amazing, <laughs> and you will enjoy your time on it. And I also want to welcome one of our newest sponsors. Guys, a little story for you. You know the last time you came home, you unloaded the new brewing equipment, which I know you were excited about, and the precious little lady said, oh, you bought more beer stuff? Now, let me tell you, this new sponsor is going to help you get out of the doghouse. To Design Art, they have some of the most incredible jewelry you've ever seen. Handmade, one-of-a-kind pieces. Check them out. Their buttons are below. And click on those and it'll take you right there. Guys, I don't know, jewelry is no big thing to me, but... For the ladies, you may find it might even get you more brewing equipment into your brew shop. So, with that being said, let's get started on our project. This segment sponsored by homebrewtalk.com. Join us and talk about your homebrew ideas, questions, recipes, or anything else to help with your homebrewing enjoyment. Homebrewtalk.com. Join us on this great forum. You're done with your boil, and now you need to transfer that wort to your fermenter, and of course, we're going to chill it. But what's happening now, as, as a brewer, you've done everything you can up to the boil. Now it's up to you hiring some fantastic little yeasties to go in here, and they have to work their butt off to turn it into beer. Well, one of the things that really helps them is they need to have some aeration. They need oxygen to help build better cells, cell walls, and help them reproduce better. So we need to introduce into our wort some kind of oxygen, whether it's through the air or a pure oxygen source from a bottle. But that's going to be important. Well, let me tell you, what I used to do is I would get my wort transferred into my fermenter, and then I would take a tube with a diffusion stone, stick it down through the hole, and move it around a bit and hope to get it aerated really well. Well, I've got to give credit where credit is due. There's a gentleman on one of the great forums out there, Lane Rossi. Thank you for the inspiration of coming up with an idea on how to get oxygen into my wart much more efficiently. And here it is. It's a simple copper tubing system. My oxygen comes up through here. I have got my diffusion stone inside. My wort comes from my chiller through here, out this tube, and into the fermenter. Now all I have to do is turn on my pump and let my fermenter fill up, and it's already oxygenated, and I'm ready to pitch my wort. So this is what we're going to talk about, is how to make one of these today. So lined out here are the components that I'm going to use for my wort aerator. I have simply a copper half-inch T, using Class M copper pipe with just a couple little pieces. I've got a male and female copper pipe connections, a copper cap that I'm going to drill a hole in the end so I can insert the tube that's going to have the actual bubble unit. And then finally, I just have a brass 3 8 nipple here, threaded, but it's going to be soldered into the copper. And here I have the same thing, basically, but it's a 
quick disconnect system where I can remove the hose from this end and allow this to slide in and I will solder that. I had to file the threads of this one since they were a little bit larger. One thing I'm going to do is the usage of the coupling here allows me to take my end piece out and be able to clean it or fix it or whatever I need to do and be able to clean the unit even better. I thought that was important. So that's my setup and now I'm going to start soldering it together. One thing to keep in mind when you are soldering is if you have a really heavy part compared to a lightweight part, that heavy part needs to be heated well ahead of time. This threaded piece, of course, is quite heavy. So actually, I'm just applying heat strictly to it, getting it good and warm and ready to accept the solder. You can see how the flux is already bubbling. There we go. Now we're flowing some solder into the joint. Now I want the cap to be good and warm. And it'll literally just draw the solder right up into it. I've got it on a wire screen, a stainless steel wire screen, so I can get more heat underneath if I need to. May not need to. Yeah, it's flowing really nice. One of the reasons I use the silver solder on the brass parts is then I can come back and do other soldering and never have to worry about it coming unloose because it melts at a much higher point than normal solder. In fact, uh, I had to get the brass parts basically uh, glowing. So I had the two pieces finally finished. I'm going to put them in some PBW to get them good and cleaned and do any last final cleanup and making them look a little prettier. And then I will put in the final piece, which will be siliconed into the top unit. And here's a shot of our finished piece. You can see this will be the removable part that comes from the chiller. And then when I want to clean it, I can simply take this part apart and there's my beer stone. So now I'm able to aerate my beer as it goes from my chiller to my fermenter. One additional piece I have added to the oxygenator is this simple strip, a thermometer. This will let me know exactly what the temperature of my wort going into the fermenter is as it comes out of the chiller. Just another simple little thing. So there you have it. <laughs> My do-it-yourself oxygenator, basically for just a few bucks in copper parts and a good diffusion stone. You can put either air or oxygen through the system and you're gonna find you're gonna have a better oxygenated wart and therefore your yeast is gonna work a whole lot better for you. Welcome to the tasting room. Hey, it wasn't too long ago that we tried out a lovely Trappist ale called Chimay. And I said, oh, I really like this beer. Well, since then, you guys have been sending me names of other ones that I have just got to taste. And I was able to find two more Trappist beers for today's discussions on how they taste. And I'm rather excited because I remember Chimay being delicious and you've even said that some, both of these will make it not be as good. Well, now I am excited. Trappist ales, of course, are ales that are produced, both of these are from Belgium, under the strict regulations of the monks who originally brewed the ale. First one today is Duval. I'm excited because this is a bigger beer. We got eight and a half percent. And by the way, the crew keeps yelling at me, what's a bigger beer? 
Well, bigger beers to me are beers that got lots more alcohol. In other words, they started out with an OG, original gravity, well above a 160. What is it? Denny always says, life doesn't start till after 60. Well, let's get into this beer. Fosso had a few of you make the good observation that I may be pouring a little too quickly. It's like I'm trying to not make you wait too long for this beer to get in the glass. But we've had some problems with it. Heads just getting away from us. Possibly it's even the glasses being too warm. Well, oh my, 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 my. This is a beautiful, beautiful pale ale, really. And it Eight and a half percent alcohol. Oh. Mm mm mm. Mm. The, the carbonation in this is fantastic. It's almost a champagne kind of carbonation in the mouth. And if you look at it, you can see the bottom is just full of bubbles and they're all cascading toward the top. It's quite hoppy. You hop heads will love this, but it's a delightful beer, and I do like it. Well, our next one, as one viewer has said to me, this one will knock my socks off. And so, obviously, I'm saving it to last. This is an Orville. I don't want to say other than we're going to get it poured. This a little bit darker colored, a more amber ale. And I can already smell the magnificent aroma. Well, sorry guys, my pouring today just plain sucks. But there you go, you can see the difference between the two and the colors. But if you observe the bubble action, they're both exactly the same. This one seems to have a champagne bubbles. Lovely. Well, mm, this has got a lovely malt uh, smell to it. Much less hoppy smell than this one. Mm. Oh my. That's got a delicious taste. Let's get a little more in here. This has what I want to say a little bit of a, you know, got away from me, a, a little bit of a, a quite a clove taste. 6.9% alcohol, and it's not a crystal clear uh, amb or amber either. It's kind of a cloudy. Very different color as far as the heads are concerned, but the flavor is really good. And I'm going to have to say, this one did knock my socks off. You recommended it, and you recommended it well. Well, two lovely beers, both Trappist sales. So, I'm going to say, yeah, two and a half thumbs up on the Duval. I think it is gorgeous. <sighs> this one, <laughs> we're going the full three thumbs up. This is delicious. Try them both. You'll love them. And we'll see you next week in the tasting room. And I don't think I'm going to share these with the crew either. <laughs> see you next week. Well, I sure enjoyed those beers. I'm glad you suggested them. Keep those suggestions coming. And any other idea that you have for this show, leave them in the comments box below. Just press on comments, it lets you in. Or you can always email me, and I will get back to you. So, next week, we're going to do an all-grain brewing session. We'll go through what I use as my system, and we're making a big beer. We'll talk about that next week. Mm -hmm.